Hey guys, it's Mei Mei, and today I wanna to show you my favorite kind of cheater coloring technique. So I'm gonna be using this stamp set that is called Blessings, and I wanna use all of these leaves, and of course the sentiments, but we're gonna start down here. Now, I've already loaded my leaves on some blocks off to the side. This is the Fall Dots and Stripes paper pack from Echo Park, love it. What I wanna do is I want to use one piece of every color, so I'm gonna to need to cut that out. Okay, here's my first recommendation. The technique I'm gonna show you uses two markers, okay, that are complementary to the paper. So what you wanna do when you're picking out the colors to go with what stamps is your darker papers you need to use your bigger images on if you want to be able to see the technique work. These smaller pieces, we can use lighter colors and it'll work just fine. So I need three pieces of the lighter color and I just need a little bit. Now let me also tell you this. I would use my scraps first, but I don't have any scraps from this paper pad. I have used this paper pad up in my world um, since last year. So I'm cutting some of these off and I'm only gonna get, I may do two of each leaf. I don't know, we're gonna start with one and then we'll see. So this color to me is dark. So I wanna use it for one of these guys. So I need a bigger piece. You're thinking that doesn't make sense. It will make sense when we get going. I hope that even fits. That will just fit that dude. Okay, and then I need one more. Now this is a lighter color, so I'm gonna use it for one of the smaller ones. And this may bother you cutting out of your pads like this. This is how I like to do it. It makes life easy for me. And then I think I'll do this green in one of the big ones. And I may have enough colors. One, two, three, four, five. I thought I had six leaves. Hmm, okay, we'll just use five and we won't have to use the brown. All right, so I'm gonna cut a bigger piece here. I also wanna tell you, you could totally do this with your free SVGs that come with the stamp sets. You could do this on like your joy machine um, and just go ahead and cut these out. But I'm just gonna fussy cut today to show you how to do it. Alrighty then, let's start stamping. So I'm gonna use some memento. And the reason is we're gonna be coloring with alcohol markers and you wanna use a dye ink. A dye ink dyes the page. So when you use the alcohol marker on top, it won't move. All right, so I'm gonna stamp this little guy on here like this. And he'll seem kind of, he'll seem kind of pale on the color, especially this dark color, but just give it a minute. Let me show you, let's follow the technique through. All right, and then let's do the green one. If you're unsure about your colors of, or your types of ink, I wanna tell you that I have a um, class on my, on my store that's called Stamp Right Up that will help you with your um, knowledge of ink. It'll let you know everything there is to know about ink. And so if you're struggling about what ink for what purpose, check out that little class. It's really affordable and it's yours for all time. So if you buy it one time, you can reference it whenever you need to. All right, I'm gonna keep stamping and then we'll start coloring. Okay, so I decided to go ahead and do two of each leaf. Some of them, like this one, I did it in yellow and green, but I think I'll need more leaves for the, the pattern I'm wanting to do. So I'm gonna move these off to the side for now. And what I wanna show you is what we're gonna do next. I cut for myself some little strips of the cardstock. Now, I don't wanna have to do this a bunch of times, so I'm gonna show you how we're gonna do it. I'm gonna use my um, Nouveau markers, my, my alcohol markers, and I'm gonna find two colors. I wanna find a color that's like one to two shades darker, and then a color that is just a little lighter than that shade. I'll show you what I mean. Let's start with, let's start with the green. Let's just see how well we do. So we'll go with green. Now I'm gonna pull out a bunch of different greens that I think will work, and then we'll test them. Now, you might be surprised when you're doing this, you might think, oh, I know the green that's gonna work. But sometimes when it dries on the page, it's a little different color. So I'm gonna color this on like so. And then I'm gonna remember that was number one that I just colored, just lay it there. Then I'm gonna get this next one. Oop, wrong end, I wanna use the bullet end. Then I'm gonna color this one on. Oh, that one's dark. Let it sit, then the next one. And then the next one. And I'm really surprised, like some of these colors are not reacting the way I thought they would. I'm really surprised about that one. All right, so I've got my four colors laid here, so I know which ones are which line. And now I wanna pick a dark color and a light color. And honestly, I love this combination right here. It may be too dark, but I'm wondering if I wouldn't like this with that. I don't know, I think it's these two. So I think I'm gonna go with these two for my green. Now let me show you a trick so you don't have to do this over and over again. So go back to your paper pad, okay? I'm gonna pull these pieces out because they're loose now. Go back to your paper pad. And what you can do is in your little book here, this will save you so much time if you do this technique again. You take and you write green, and y'all, I am the messiest writer, green, and you put your two numbers. I've got 417 and 413. 417, 
four, 13. And if you do that with every one, when you do this technique, and you just go look at the front of the book and you won't have to do all that looking. All right, so I'm gonna do that with the rest of my colors and we'll get right back together. So I have all of my information written in the um, front of the book, but here's the thing that's interesting. Some of these colors are really close to each other. Some of them are not, but that's okay. It only has to do with how the color reacts to the page you're using. Now, if you struggle with coloring, with alcohol markers and things like that, I'm gonna show you how this works, okay? Let me zoom you in, okay. With the yellow, I'm gonna take the two colors that I chose for the yellow, I'll move the others out of the way so they don't confuse us or get in our way. Okay, so here's the two colors we chose. And what I wanna do is take my darker of the two and then my lighter of the two. The page itself will be my third color. All right, so I'm gonna start with the darker and I'm just gonna do that by number because sometimes I don't really know, but I'm gonna go with 404 as my darker color. <clears throat> and here's what I do, just at the edge, okay? I'm going to go around the edge of this image you're gonna think you're not doing anything. And at first it will feel like that, but you will be surprised how this little bit of color changes the images and gives them such depth. And the thing I love about it is the longest part of this process is picking the color. And once you go back to that book year after year, you already know. Cause you, I mean, pretty much we keep our same markers over and over. So see how I'm just kind of outlining the inside here. I can do more if I want to, I can go out further but I like to start about like that, okay, just a little bit. Technically, you could stop there, but here's what I love. When you go in with the second color and we go right next to it, we just sort of feather it in. And I think this is so pretty. It just gives dimension. It's almost like inking, but with custom colors, if that makes sense. Like each leaf is gonna be inked with its own color. I'm gonna show you something else we can do too. If you want to use your blender marker, okay, let me do this real quick. I would color the um, stem down here, just one color. I would just color it with the darkest color of the leaf, just like that. Okay, if you wanna use your blender marker, let me find mine, I always have to look for it, there it is. You can come back in, see how I don't need it? You see how I, I do not need it? But you can take your blender marker and come back in if you want to and kind of blend that together. You don't need it, you just don't need it. I also could take the darker color if I want to, which is the 404, I picked up the wrong one, and I can come into these veins and just for a little something extra, just kind of hit them with a little bit. And this is gonna look like we did a lot of coloring, but we didn't. See that? I'm gonna bring it up really close to you so you can really see it. I get my hand steady because we are super close. But see that? And we did very, very little work. Two colors, the most work was picking the colors. All right, so let's do the other ones. So there's the yellow, let's do green. Now my green colors that I chose are, are very different from each other. I feel like they are. So I'm gonna be super careful here and not use the chisel tip. I keep opening the wrong end. Use this bullet nib and I'm going to put just color at the trace, just a little bit. I do not want to get into the image too much. I just wanna do the edges like this. And again, you're thinking, Oh, but you have to color so far down, you know, in our head, we think we have to color like a quarter of an inch of it down, but we don't. You just need to trust this process. Now, I am trying not to go outside the line because I probably will bubble cut these rather than try to cut every single one of these little leaves, you know, every single one of these little points. But if you go outside the line a little bit, it's not a big deal because it's a leaf and they're organic and they have shapes to them. All right, so there's that. See how dark it is? I know. Are we scared? No, because it's just paper. I can redo it. All right, so the next one comes here and it's gonna be a little lighter. Now on this, I will probably use my blender pen. I will let the paper tell me if I need it. I feel like I'm gonna need it because these colors are so much darker than the page itself, but look how pretty that is. Okay, hold on. Let's do the stem, which I always forget when I have the darker color out. And then let me get my blender. And this is where we'll go in and play a little bit. Now the thing about your blender is, it's going to pull ink. It actually pushes ink, I know, long story. But see how I'm just gonna hit in here in the middle and where that ink kinda goes in, it will blend it together. And you can blend, 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 super blend, whatever you wanna do, but I don't think you need it. And look how that leaf looks. So stinking easy, so easy, love it. All right, I'm gonna do the rest of the leaves. On these tiny ones, I am using the blender pen and I'm coming from the middle out because I wanna keep the center light. Remember how I told you that the alcohol, the blender will push the color? That's gonna push it out to the edge and it'll look beautiful when it dries. When it's wet, it still looks a little one color, but when it dries, it'll give you that lighter color in the middle. Let me show you one more little tip. 
if you're doing something small like these, these are really small guys, right? And you don't really think you have the room for three colors being the dark color, the light color, and then your blender. Don't use the light color, just use your blender and soften that edge. And you don't even have to always have three colors and you still get the look of a blended colored piece. It's so cool. I did a video like this using um, just, just one color in your blender a long time ago. We'll link that below because that explains how to do that one. But I like, if I have a big enough space, like to me, this space is much bigger. If I have a, a big enough space, I like to add that second color. But here, I don't need it. You just don't need it. It's so fun. All right, keep it going. And I want to tell you too, I believe what makes this technique work is using colored paper. Um, have I got the right one? 427, 425, yes. The paper becomes the third color. It kind of does its job, right? It just kind of does that highlight for you in the middle. Also, notice I'm not really doing highlighting. You see that, right? We're not really doing highlighting here. We're just kind of adding some dimension. But I think the color of the paper really matters, you know, using that third color. Here I am gonna use this one because I've got a lot of space here in the middle. I'm gonna kind of bring that lighter. And then I will also on this one, because the colors are so kind of different, use the blender pen. But honestly, I don't think you have to. I do not think you have to. So if you have not noticed by now, I am not a professional at coloring, but I do like to try and find little tips and tricks that make it look like I am. And now we fussy cut. So now all my fussy cutting is done and I want to show you something else you can do. Now you can totally like ink these up with, um, you could take like distress ink and go around them and just kind of distress ink them, but I'm going to do something different. You know how when you finish fussy cutting, you always take like a black marker and go around it. I'm not going to do a black marker. I'm going to use the same color that I used for the darkest color on the leaf. And the reason for this is I want the edge to be that dark saint, like a, even just a more concentrated version of that color that I use, because it will really give it that um, kind of deep, rich color look. Now, when you're doing this, do your coloring from the back side of the image. Don't try to do this from the front. If you do it from the front and you slip, then it's gonna make a line across your leaf and you've done too much work for that at this point. I just love how this looks using the same color. It's so pretty. It kind of gives it this really rustic kind of fall look. So there's that one. And let me do this guy. And then I want to show you something else. So I'm going to do this on the orange one so you can see this. I'd originally thought I would bubble cut these, but I don't love how that looks. I don't love the lighter orange outside of my dark. So I'm going to try this. I cut this one super close, but not exact on the line. So I'm going to see what happens if I take my marker and just kind of come in here to the edge and color that rather than going back and cutting the whole thing out again. See how the color's kind of bleeding through when I go behind the page? I'm okay with that. And I might even have to come back on the front and kind of do a little more work. But you can do this if you end up bubble cutting it and not liking it, um, which is what I did. I was going to bubble cut them. And if you don't know what that means, that just means leaving some area around the leaf. And then I decided, no, I want them to be dark all the way to the edge. But look how that adds almost another color. So pretty. We can get around being good colorist because I don't know how to color. I have, I have not mastered the whole alcohol marker thing. I want to show you this. See the difference in the right side versus the left just from using the same color to go around the edges. So pretty. And if you know you're going to do them that way from the beginning, just go ahead and color outside the lines. But I love how that looks taking the color around the edge. It just adds another layer. All right, I'm going to edge all of these guys and then we're going to put them on a card. So you can see what I've done here. I put foam squares on the back of all of them and I kind of concentrated more to the top and not the center because I have a plan for how I'm gonna glue them down. Okay, then I went and found a punch. I'm gonna use my hexagon punch for this, for the sentiment. I think this will be really pretty. And the sentiment I'm gonna use comes from the set that we're using for the leaves. And it is, um, it's give thanks to the Lord for he is good, his love endures forever. So I gotta get the give thanks one too. I almost forgot that one. Let me pull that one off. 
Okay, so on my little hexagon, I think I'm gonna go back to my Versafine this time, just because I love sentiments done in the, in the pigment. And we're gonna do give thanks at the top. I think this is gonna be really pretty on this hexagon, and I'm gonna have to bring it to me a little bit so I can see what I'm doing. I just think this will fit pretty. So give thanks. With these stamps, these fonts are kind of open. Don't overload them with ink and don't twist them on your ink pad because when you do, it puts the ink into the grooves and you don't wanna do that. Just take your um, stamp and just kiss the pad. Kiss, kiss, kiss like this. And I'm not twisting or, or even squishing, I'm just kissing it. And that way the ink gets where it needs to be and not where it doesn't need to be. That's pretty, I love that. Give thanks to the Lord for he is good, his love endures forever. That fits on there perfectly. All right, and now let me show you. So I cut for myself this piece of wood paper. I think this is so pretty. And I want this to live kind of here. And then I want my leaves to kind of explode from the middle here. <laughs> it's kind of my plan. So I did a little layout earlier. And what I was thinking is, where this is not got a foam, it would kind of be flat and then the foam would kind of lift up, which I kind of like. Um, and then I'm gonna lay these around my sentiment. I don't wanna cover up my scripture. So do it like that. And then I'm just gonna place these guys in different places like this. And the little ones, I'm gonna let kind of fill in the middle. And I just want it to look like a pile of leaves, like they have just landed there. Does that make sense? Let's start with this first guy. You might want to, and I probably should have, lay these out and then take like a snapshot, like use your phone and take a picture and then kind of mimic the picture. That would probably be a good idea. But I'm living on the edge. We're just gonna glue down a pile of leaves and see what happens. I'm not gonna glue my sentiment down just yet. I can come back and do it. This will just get me started. Because I don't know if I want it tucked in or lifted up. I might even want it lifted up a little more and let my leaves be down here. So that I know nothing gets in the way of my scripture. That looks good. Let's do that. For my little hexagon piece, I'm gonna glue it straight down. I was gonna pop it up, but I think it'll look good kind of straight down like this. Just place this into kind of where we, we kind of built that little spot for it. Let's get this guy straight so I can get that pretty straight. Now I'm gonna show you what I would do to kind of make it all pop. I'm gonna take a black pen and a white pen. I'm gonna mix them together, okay? So for the white pen, I'm gonna come on these leaves that we did, and I'm just gonna come in and add some dots, just some dots of color. I do not know why this makes such a difference, but let me bring it to the camera. Do you see how that just makes such a difference on the leaves? It just does. It just kind of highlights them in a way, and I'm trying to stay where my darkest concentration of color is because that's where those will pop the most. These little finishing touches are what take your card to the next level. And have you ever noticed on leaves, sometimes they do have these little dots? I think it's kind of cool. All right, I'm gonna run around and do all the little white dots. Warning to you, you can easily put your finger into this or put your hand in it, so pay attention. Maybe kind of go in one direction as you do this, because you can stick your hand in it. Then with my black pen, I'm gonna start by going around my little scent, my little shape here. And I'm gonna do dot, dot, dash. You guys know me very well. You already knew it was coming. These are my finishing touches I like to do. I think these are the things that give your card personality. And you may have even a different pattern you like to use. Some people do a little swirly line or some people do just stitches. I used to do stitches all the time. But there's something about this dot, dot, dash that I just love. Also using my black pen, I'm gonna go on the white part, the white page underneath and add three dots here and there. These little dots, just kind of add texture and it makes me think of like um the leaves kind of exploding out and it's just a series of three dots kind of together 
um, in a triangle shape or a, kind of a diamond shape, really in a triangle shape. And I just kind of go around and do this to add a little bit of something. You could do just single dots here and there, like one, two, three dots in a row like that, whatever you want. It just really brings the page to life. Then I'm just adding a series of single dots just for interest. Some of you guys are probably like, you lost me before the dots. I just like them. I think they look cool with the leaves. All right, I need to ink the edges of this page. I'm gonna use Walnut Stain, it's dark, and I'm not gonna go crazy. I'm not going to um, be heavy handed with it. I'll show you what I mean. I'm just gonna kinda kiss the page like that. I like the dark. I think it'll really pop on the card base I chose. So just a slight edge here. You can go whatever way you want. I just want just a little bit, not too much. Isn't that a beautiful pile of leaves? I think it is so pretty. Now let's put it on its card base. So for my card base, I'm using the same color as I did for the sentiment piece. I thought that would be pretty. I've already scored this. I cut it and scored it all at the same time. So let me get this guy creased down. And of course you can decorate the inside any old way you want to. I have enough dimension on here with those leaves that I'm not gonna pop this up. You see what paper I'm using? Does that kind of creep some of you guys out? Are you like, no, don't waste that paper. I have so much of this um, pattern. You, know, you get like four of these in the sheet and I really wanted that rustic wood here. And I think it'll get more use here than even me cutting those pieces out. But that's from the Fall Mente book. And you get so many sheets of it, I don't feel bad about using it. I think this is beautiful. Also, I'm not gonna ink the edges of my card. And the reason is I didn't ink these edges. So these colors match and they're nice and crisp. I'm gonna leave this alone. Isn't that so pretty? I think that's a pretty neat way to use coloring without having to know too much about alcohol markers. Kind of a cheater way, I guess, or a, um, a hack method because I'm really bad at blending colors, but when I let the paper work to my advantage, it really seems to work. I hope you guys enjoyed this. I hope you will consider subscribing. It's free. You just hit the little red button, and if you hit the bell beside it, you can tell YouTube to let you know whenever I post a video. Also, if you enjoyed this type of technique video from me, give me a thumbs up so I'll know that. That lets me know what videos you really like. It also also tells other people, hey, this is a video you might want to watch. Hey, thanks so much for being here today. Be sure to go check out our customer gallery for all kinds of inspiration. And if you make something like this, you know I want to see it. Share yours over on our customer gallery as well. All the links to everything used today, as well as our customer gallery, are in the description below. Thanks so much, guys. Till next time. Bye now.